if you're going to waterproof a, a shower, this is one of the easiest and quickest methods. Step by step, everything you need to know. Okay, so I got this this shower to do here. It's um, it's a pretty big shower. It's about sixty eight by forty eight, and it's about eight foot high. It's got a bench seat, which I'm gonna have to have to uh, cover. So anyway, I'm using hydroband board here, Latacrete hydroband board, and. I've got this one sheet on first. I mark my, my, my studs down here and I can mark my studs on the ceiling. I'm going to install this whole thing uh, with hydroband board and make it completely waterproof. So with the hydroband board, you can <coughs> seal this up three different ways. So I'm actually gonna do this using the sealant. So I have my, my sausage gun, this is actually a weedy sausage gun, and these are the sausages of the sealant, but they also come in regular, if you don't have a sausage gun, they also come in the regular 10 ounce tubes. What so, you do is you put the sealant between the sheets. So you put the sealant between the sheets, that way you seal this completely up, and then you put the other sheet on top, and then you get a waterproof joint. Now, I'll put a link in the cards to point to a video that shows you the other two methods used to install this hydroband board system and make it waterproof. So the hydroband has a waterproof membrane on the front, the core is waterproof, and then it has the same waterproofing membrane on the, bottom, in the back without printing. So um, these are the sheets that I'm going to be cutting up and installing. So I got one sheet here. Now I put more screws than I need to. You don't need washers with this system unless you're doing a ceiling. And if you're doing a ceiling, then you need to use the washers. But for, for the wall, you just put in the screws. These are the Latacrete screws, one and five eighths inch. So you just use the screws. And you can put one every foot. I actually do a little more than I do, like one every eight inches. More screws aren't gonna hurt you. And then when you, to seal these up, you put a dab of, you're gonna be seeing all this, you put a dab of uh, the sealing over the screw and you seal up that hole. So anyway, let me get this sheet up here and let me show you how to do that. So this is a sausage. This is a sausage gun. Just poke a few holes. So these sheets come in several sizes. I'm using four by eight sheets, but they also come in three by five. Uh, you can also get them in different thicknesses, a half inch, a quarter inch, uh, five eighths, all different sizes. So I'm using four by eight sheets here, but they also come in three by five. They come two inch thick, they come uh, five eighths inch thick, half inch thick, uh, many different sizes. So you can just get what you need. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell okay so these are not drywall screws they're actual laticrete screws they're coated um, so you don't if you're going to use a different screw use one that's a design for a wet area I like a stainless steel screw or a coated screw or something like that so as I mentioned you don't need to put use washes with a hydroband board however if you're doing a ceiling you de do need to use the washes and you do need to put them up more frequently like uh, every six inches and that's because the uh, weight of the tile is pulling directly down on the ceiling okay so <clears throat> Okay, so just to make this perfect, perfectly clear, when you put two sheets together, you want to have sealant between them. So you put a nice fat bead of the sealant uh, on, on the joints, 
and whether you're doing a corner or you're doing one sheet on top of another and then you press them together and let it squeeze through you flatten out the sealant that has squeezed through It's actually a good idea to do this after you've got something board up so that you don't get it all over you. But I'm just going to do it now just to show you. And then you apply more sealant so that you get a good two inch overlap of the sealant over the seam. So you want to make sure that you get the seam well covered with the sealant so that you are sure to have a waterproof connection. So if you're wondering how to cut the hydroband board, it's actually quite simple. Just get a utility knife with a sharp blade, score it. You can snap it and then finish the cut. Uh, very easy to cut this hydroband board. Okay, so I'm gonna cut gonna cut the piece on the wall over here and I'm gonna show you how to do the corner okay so this system is actually very quick because you don't have to put up banding you don't have to mix up any thin set you can seal it as you go all the corners all the seams uh, the curb everything uh, however if you're doing a uh, steam shower you can't use a sealant or the liquid applied waterproofing membrane. It's perfectly fine for a regular shower like this. For a steam shower, you have to use the banding in all, at all seams and all transitions. And the hydroband board, this hydroband board is rated for a commercial shower, continuous use uh, steam shower. So uh, there's no extra uh, membrane or anything that you have to put on top of it uh, for a continuous use. So just a, you know, a little bit of information to be sure if you do want a steam shower, you can still use the hydroband board. However, you have to use the banding. Um, and when I do a regular shower, I prefer using the sealant over the banding or the liquid applied waterproofing membrane because it's just quicker and easier and you don't have to mix anything. So you just do it as you go along and it's uh, very, very quick. Okay, so. I got the sheet cut. The nice bead of sealant in the corner here.
Okay, so that is doesn't need any banding. It's all sealed up. That is completely waterproof. I still got to hit all these screws. And this seam is all done. I'm going to knock that down a little bit. So, I'm going to do this side wall and the bench seat. And then I'm going to do that wall. So now I have to punch out the holes for these in that board. So this is the way to do it. I'm going to cut this aside.
Do you see it? Let's do it. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I got all the corners done. The corners. I got the curb done. I got the bench seat done. Looking over all the screw holes. Got all the curb done. Over here, I'm gonna put banding up and down here. I'm gonna put banding up and down here and up and down there and when I put the shower floor in then I'll put banding all around the perimeter but for now I'm pretty much done with all the prep for the shower as it is okay so I got the mud in with the bonding flange so tomorrow, I, I have several videos on that show how to do this. So I didn't want to just go over it again. Um, I'll link to those videos in the cards in the, and in the end screen so that you can find that if you need it. How to install the mud uh, with the bonding flange. And uh, so this is going to try tomorrow. I'm going to install the sheet membrane and the banding around the perimeter. 
to make it completely waterproof. I'll let that set for 24 hours and then we'll flood test. Yesterday I installed the mud floor with the bonding flange and today I am going to, I have Laticrete sheet membrane that's in the truck. That's just the sheet membrane that goes over the floor and the I'm going to use the the five inch banding around the perimeter with inside corners on in all the corners. The this bench seat I don't need it on the bench seat because this is all sealed up with the sealant. Very quick, very easy. I don't need it on the curb. I don't need the um, outside corners on the curb uh, because that's all sealed up as well but I do need it over here to um, to waterproof the transition from the hydro band board to the sheetrock so I'm gonna put banding right over that I don't need to do over here this is all sealed up so there's this completely waterproof and I put it all over the screw holes so basically just to recap when you're installing the board you put your board on you put a, a bead of silk uh, of the sealant on on the seam you put the other board on top you spread out the excess that come uh, comes through and then you put another bead on top of that and smooth it out so just in case you're wondering what this this banding is here I kind of peel, tried to peel off a little bit so that you could see how it's made it's basically a rubbery type waterproofing membrane with the anchoring fleece on it so this is completely waterproof on both sides and then they add this this fleece to it so that will the uh, the thin set can grab that and adhere to it so that's and this is what it looks like without being destroyed like i just did there to show you so that's how that works so I'm going to be putting that all around the perimeter. I'll be cutting out the hole for the for the drain, and then this, you know, and then I'll do these these transitions here. And this shower will be completely waterproof and ready to tile. I um, I'm going to flood test it tomorrow so that I make sure there's no leaks. And I know there's not aren't going to be leaks, but you know, it's always a a good thing to be absolutely certain and then I'll drain the water install the shower floor and move on to the walls so I'm not going to actually show the installation of the tile on this one because this video is actually about the hydroband board uh, shower system so that you can see how to do it it's very easy it's quick because you don't have to put any banding on it and uh, it's uh, it's, it's a lot of great product so anyway let's get to it so uh, to install the membrane you can pretty much use any uh, laticrete thin set uh, in this case I'm going to use 253 gold but you can use multimax light you can use tri light you can use 254 platinum uh, any one of those thin sets will work uh, so basically I'm just going to use an 8 inch notch shroud you can use a a small v-notch trowel i don't remember the exact size of that trowel i'll look it up and i'll, I'll include that in the description and um, this is one of the ways to do uh, a sealed system with hydroband board you can also if you want you can use the banding for all the corners and seams in fact if you do a steam shower that's probably what you want to do uh, for a regular shower the sealant is perfectly fine so let me get to it okay so this is the laticrete sheet membrane i forget what the mill thickness is i'll look it up but i'll put that in the description and that's going to go on the shower floor the banding is going to go So it's going to have a two inch overlap on the wall. This is a five inch band. 
So you're gonna have, well, two and a half inches and two and a half inch overlap. You need a minimum of a two inch overlap on everything. Um, this, is, this is the inside corner. So when you put, that's the inside corner. So when you overlap this, you don't have to go all the way into the corner. You just go after there like that, and that'll give you your two inch overlap. Same over here. And if you were using it up and down, same on there, they give you that two inch uh, little leg. So you don't have to go down uh, further down. So uh, even if you're doing on the membrane, so when I put the sheet membrane down, on um, to overlap that I'm gonna make sure that the sheet membrane overlaps by minimum of two inches so you're gonna see me do that in a second so it's, remember it's a it's a two inch minimum two inch overlap okay so I'm gonna pre-cut all my all my banding and my membrane then i'm going to mix some thin, thin set and put it down so okay so i vacuum the whole floor so there's nothing if the floor is clean and then before i actually start cementing it down i'm gonna damp with a damp sponge i'm gonna wet it down so that the thin set is not sucked out of the, the moisture isn't sucked out of the thin set prematurely. There's all my corners. You can crease this if you want. It holds a crease pretty good. So you'll notice here that we just got a single overlap. You don't want to go all the way into the corner. You can do that. Now you got three layers right here. So you don't want to do that. You just want to stay. Just go over the leg and you get your two inch overlap. You get your two inch overlap and you don't have a build up in the corners. You just have just two layers. If, if I overlap that, I have one, two, and three. Okay, so I got all my banding pre-cut up and down here. I just put a piece of tape just to show you. I don't need banding on the curb, but I will fold that corner two inches. I'll fold that corner, overlap here, you know, two inches, at least two inches. Overlap here, two inches. Got all the bottom cut. Now I'm just gonna I'm gonna cut the membrane, then clean everything off again, sweep it off, vacuum it off, and mix my thin set and start going.
Ah, you cut this with a knife. Oh, you can cut it with uh, the shears. I prefer the shears. It's, it's just easier. It's easy to keep a straight line and help you stretch. So I have my two inch overlap over here. So I didn't have to, so I, but don't throw away your scraps because you might be able to use them. I have another piece over here that I might, over here that I might be able to use. So all my, all my banding is all cut in. So let's make them some thin set. So I'm going to use 253 gold. This is white. And for anyone that might be interested, it's an A118.11 thin set ANSI A118.11. This is a great thin set. Okay, so I get a lot of comments online as to the order of installing the banding and the membrane. Now, my response is always, it doesn't matter what order you put it in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why. This is, most people that are telling me that, and the reason that they, they're, they're trying to, uh, the reason they say that is because they're thinking of it as a roof, that it has to shed water. Uh, this system does not have to shed water, it has to hold water. It has to be waterproof. So the order where that you do the banding and the membrane does not matter. Once it dries, it's completely sealed, it's completely waterproof, it's completely watertight. So typically, I will put So the way I usually do it is I put the corner in first, all four corners, then I put the banding on, and then I put the membrane on. Now this is gonna be completely watertight. So you say, well, how do you know that? Well, because I'm gonna flood test this. So, once I, this is dried and set up, I'm gonna put probably a couple of inches of water in here. So if it just needs to shed water, that's gonna be a problem. But if it needs to be watertight, it's not gonna be a problem because it doesn't matter where the seam is. If this is full of water and it sits 24 hours, it doesn't matter if the seam is on top like that or if it's on the bottom like that, it doesn't matter because it's going to be completely sealed. It's, if, if there's water up to here and it's sitting there, uh, the, if the water's going to penetrate the seam, it doesn't matter if it's like that because it's going that way or if it's like that because then it'll go in that way. So it doesn't matter what order you put it in. Just 
in my trowel, eight inch square nut trowel. Okay, so mix my can set up according to directions. If you want to know how to do that, I have plenty of videos that show how to do that. Uh, this is about the shower, so I don't want to have, you know, make it that long that you have to. It would be too long if I show everything. So basically, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. You want to mix a thin set looser, but it still can hold a notch. So I'm going to put this corner in. One corner in this corner. You can also use your pay knife to fill in if you want. If it's easier for you. Get those other two corners over there and then we'll put the bandy on okay so I got all four corners on and then we'll put the bandy on so when you do this you're taking you're removing dust and you're giving the substrate a drink so it doesn't suck the moisture out of the sensor If you wonder if this makes a difference, like keying it in, if it makes a difference, I have a video on my show that shows that there is a huge difference.
Okay, I'll get the other two sides. I'm gonna put this test plug in here. And then I put, I put a few drops of water in here. Just to the top of that rim there. So that way when I come back tomorrow to blood test this, if the water is still there, that means that the plug is not leaking. If the water isn't there, that means I'm gonna have to tighten that plug up a little bit more. Just, just a little bit of insurance to make, make sure that when you flood test this you're actually flood testing the membrane and not a leaky uh, test plug okay so i vacuumed the floor get my membrane right in. So the bonding flange comes with a template for the size of the hole for the bonding flange. So we use that to cut the, uh, mark the hole and cut it out. I'm using a putty knife, 
but you can use a float. You want to get all the air out. And you can embed it in the thin set and not put any holes in the membrane. Okay, so let's do this now. get the rest of this here and that will basically be done okay so I'm all sealed up okay so that's basically it the water the the shower is completely waterproof I'll give it 24 hours to, to set and then we'll flood test it, make sure there are no leaks, and start, then start setting time. So don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, so you, I upload a video every Sunday at about 4 p.m. And uh, check the description, lots of links to useful stuff there, tools, a PDF on uh, the basics of floor, uh, floor tile installation, and that's on sale for a dollar. Anyway, check out uh, my YouTube channel, and thanks for watching. I hope uh, you found this useful too. Uh, if you're gonna need to waterproof a, a shower, this is one of the easiest and quickest methods. Okay, so the uh, shower's had 24 hours to dry, and got some some water here, a couple buckets. I'm gonna need more than that, but I've got a couple of buckets ready. 
my drain has still got water in it. Yeah, everything is ready to go. Let's flood test this. So I'm just going to put some water in here. So I'm going to uh, put probably like 20 gallons of water in there, get about an inch of water in there. I'm going to mark my level and then I'm going to let it sit overnight and then I'm going to come and check it tomorrow, make sure that it didn't leak at all, that the water's at the same level and then I'm ready for time. Okay, so we're good to go.